I think that was coyote, but there's lots of coyotes. Um, and I did just recently talk to another police officer who said they had a, a, a reported kill, a hit of a dog on I-90, and they went to check it out. They said it was the size of a German Shepherd, but it was some, they said, like a coyote-wolf hybrid. Uh, that they, what they seen, they said it the wasn't, it was, looked like out. a coyote, but it was way bigger. And I said, that's, those, that? when was that? This was, uh, fairly recent. Uh, the officer just told me the story earlier this morning before we went for our hike. Oh yeah. I mean, I remember you telling yeah. me, but I didn't know it was like that fresh. So it was a, it was a, yeah, I mean, it was a fairly recent story. Uh, okay. So now let's, let's reel her back in here since we're chatting so much. What is now your group of friends that you've had so much experience yeah. down there and then the mm-hmm. Indian burial mounds, hogs back and all yeah. this. Uh, is there any story that you've heard that you did not experience from from the group of friends? Yeah, from the group of friends. I my, mean, did, did, did they all, Ken, or were you guys always out there? We were most of ours were, to, and were together. My only one separate was the one I told you with the church group. Well, and I had an, I did have another one I told you that I was telling you about on Hort or on uh. South Ridge and uh, State Road. Court. Right, right, okay. right. Um, but I was with two other friends with it who witnessed it. So all these were like together. Uh, my friend Ken had several experiences. He was the one who even got us going out into the woods, kind of like, you know, we would do this all as kids. You know, Saturday morning there was Super Host on, and we would watch, you know, Legend of Boggy Creek. And it would scare the heck out of us watching it. You know, the movie from 1972. But I tell you what, I turn that movie on now and I still get scared. Okay. Um, Okay. Legends of Boggy Creek scared the ever-loving crap out of us. We'd watch that and say, all right, let's go into the woods. You know? Let's go. Kids. Yeah, I get freaked out. I get myself all spooky out. Because right now, I couldn't go down there. I couldn't go down to that spot. And then my brother would always, my brother would go through hogs back a few years older uh, than me and uh, him and his friends were, and they'd tell us, and that, so he showed me where it was, and uh, so I, you know, I got my friends. I'm like, let's go here. You know, that's how we even got to where we wanted to go there. But it would be after we'd watch that movie, we would be like, okay, let's hit the woods. You know, let's go find it. And then we got to where it was just like an area we'd go out to play in. Okay, so now and then, let's just let's just reel it back in here again. <laughs> I've heard rumors of missing people. Uh, what do you guys say? Uh, do you know anybody that's ever come up missing? It, not in a, not a first-hand account. I have listened to uh, Dave Politis and uh, read some of his books, Missing 411, uh, some of his stories. Uh, well, I'm talking about here in Kanye. I know. We all turn you white, though, but he does have. <laughs> yeah, he started. Terrible he story. started like a. Because he was, he's a retired police detective. Right, right, right. And he's he got would the pin them on the map like robberies, the sightings. Well, and he'd start developing these clusters. And our little area here is in one of those clusters. Uh, so I don't know who the missing people are, per se. Um, no, are the clusters woodland areas and rural yes. areas? And uh, along, uh, like along the Great Lakes, the, the Great Lakes has one of the highest just numbers of missing, mysteriously missing people. Um, so you're saying there's a lot of dead bodies in our water? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of bodies. Uh, in- uh, Lake Erie usually gives up their. Uh, Lake Erie will usually give up its dead. The only the only mystery on Lake Erie is the Marquette and Bessemer Number Two. That, there's a ton of gold out there. We gotta go diving for it. I'm telling so, you that right. Uh, that's what the, the, the rumor on that was that it had a safe carrying $22,000 and what was it, 1907 money, 1907. which would be worth millions today. And, and a mysterious character that's supposed to have like another $50,000 on yes. them that jumped on the boat right as it was getting ta- taken off. Yes. And then they all end up dead. Mm-hmm. And the bodies of the, the, the oh, you're going to be fired up. The bodies of the crew washed up in Erie, the couple of them had a bunch of knives and spears on them, and the captain washed up in Canada with a bunch of stab bullets. <laughs> it does so. look like, yeah. You know, so we get into, that's another story because I've done a lot of research on it. We can go into that one at a different time. But, I mean, that's good like story. the only, it is a good story. that's like the big mystery because it launched from Conneaut. Um, well, now, if you And follow, there was people from Conneaut on that boat. Okay, here's the squirrely stuff about it. So 
the the most predominant count is there was a blizzard, a big storm yeah. goes out of the harbor and literally sinks right out of the harbor. Now, if you look at the trap, now if you look at the the trapographical graphical map or whatever it is of the water, there's a cliff right over right to the east of of Conneaut. As soon as you go out of Port Conneaut, you start heading towards Erie. There's a big you know underwater cliff, whatever it's called. That's where the boat's supposed to be. Now, nobody's ever found it. No, no one's ever found it. it. And, and there was, there was, I just re- reread the story the other day. There was like 30 people on it, but only like six people were ever found. Yeah. There's just a few crew member on one of the lifeboats mm-hmm. with all the knives. Well, and then the captain floated up it was on, carrying, in Canada. It was carrying the rail cars over, and it didn't have a gate to keep waves from coming in on it, which they say well, is, that was probably, but... The thing is that people in Conia and Girard and then over across in Port Stanley heard its whistle, heard it blowing its whistle. Oh, they, they did say uh, that. So they, it looks like it got lost because it didn't have the navigation you had back then, and it was crisscrossing, and it was during the storm, and they think it was trying to make its way to Long Point to get around that to get shelter from the storm. But it went down way before that because where bodies washed up, around Erie, Pennsylvania means it had to have sunk before Erie. I mean, just the thought of it, of a boat and they, just, back in that day carrying train cars full of ore. I yes. mean, no OSHA, no, no safety, no restrictions, just a boat in Lake Erie with tons of metal just rolling around on the inside. Yeah. That's a, they said they had huge, yeah, they had huge there waves. Huge yeah. If you're not a so comrade, I'm kind of like familiar feet, with Lake Erie. Like Lake 10 Erie 10 20 feet waves. It was huge storm. Um, and this is the thing is because fierce, this, was a, this was a metal boat. It wasn't a wooden one. Okay. And it had yeah, the, right. the metal right. rail cars on it filled with the iron ore. And nothing has ever been found on it as if it disappeared. Okay. There's no signs of it. I mean, there's no signs of it. Like there was no debris like it was, you know broken apart or nothing uh right so like a, it, it, like a big yeah. weight the only thing that's found is that weight. life the, some, the lifeboats like the lifeboats with the dead yeah bodies. and um so um, and, the, and the thumbnail look- so right so and uh the other th- you know uh the things with that with that with that sinking like that there too uh just the time period that that was in there wasn't the communications like that they didn't even know you realize it was missing for a while um so there was nobody to come look for him for a while um but they lake erie has more shipwrecks on it than any other great lake uh and it's got the fiercest water yeah, it though. has and they said it's some of the dangerous navigation dangerous is lake navigation. erie now they have found pretty much every shipwreck even old wooden boats they have found where they except have except for the best but except for this one, this is like There's the only gold one out there. So people, it's like gold. they have, and I'm telling you, because I guarantee you, we have, we have mapped the bottom of that lake, top to bottom, because its deepest spot is only like 240 feet. Right, okay? right. It's not very. So it's in, and and off of off of Conia, most of that water is 50 feet. So it had to have gotten out into deeper water, um, because it was. Nothing, and and all of the all of the searching people have dived for it. They have sonared. They have did the the lidar scans of Lake Erie. This is not there. They can't. Where find was it. the heading toward? Um, I think its initial destination was Port Stanley, straight across the lake, fifty-five was miles. It straight across. Was it straight across? Um, was its initial destination, uh, and it uh. Um, I said it it got lost in the storm and it was getting battered around. Now, one of the reasons why they had the knives. What way to go? One of the guys on there was the cook. Now, oddly, when you're getting like, hurry up, get on the lifeboat, we're going to sink. If you're going to grab anything, you're going to grab something. Maybe it'll keep you warm or something like that. (laughs) This guy grabs all of his sharp utensils. Okay. Uh, so that's what it was. It was the chef that was on the boat, and he had his knives and everything. I'm not sure why, if you're getting on it, you're like, boat sinking, and we got to get off while you say, I need to grab my knives and my, all my cutting utensils to get onto the, to get onto the, the, they get, he the left the captain boat. behind. And, uh, 
what? Yeah, the way they found the captain was not good condition. So I almost uh, think too they got the they got lost, and there possibly was a mutiny. I'm telling you, they could make a great movie out of that. How could you have a how? Okay, hold on. How can you have a mutiny in the first ten minutes? It, I, don't I mean, think they it was literally there. sank it. It was they like twenty minutes out. They. I don't think it was that long because. They say there was there were signs that they made it across to Port Stanley but couldn't find the port. No, and then no, there was, no. They, the only they thing they that was done there was only one account. There was only one account saying that they saw the light and heard the whistle. And there, there was, was well, there it. was someone in Conneaut did, and then someone in Girard or on, along the lake shore in Girard, Pennsylvania, says they. Heard saw and seen it. It. They saw yeah. it all the way up the area, and so, all the bodies floated up, so, or in the well, lifeboat right. floated that, up in here. It was it was still floating and and blowing its whistle. Okay, and that's what say people in Port Stanley swear they heard the Marquette and Bessemer's whistle, and it was a regular. It was running those cars back and forth across. Um, they said they heard its whistle, um, but it was like off its mark. So they actually think it zigzagged across Lake Erie, and then was trying to look for Long Point. So, because it took off, I mean, it just shouldn't have took off in that storm it period. It shouldn't have took off in the storm. But they didn't have, Somebody I mean, some money. it wasn't like, uh, you know, we had the National Weather Service and we you know, pull up the Weather Channel right now. And it they wasn't like that. They all knew the storm was coming. Yeah, yeah. they knew a storm was coming. The storm, the storm, the storm was already, how big. the storm was already, well, that, that is true. You don't know how big, and it was quite a bit ago, and every, you know, money talks, BS walks. Yeah. So you had that guy run. But listen. Well, comrades of Kanye, my fellow Kanye. And this is some other breaking news I want to bring up, too, and then we're going to wrap this up. We were, so as you can see, you're watching the Bigfoot stream, and just for all two million over there, watch right there. There he is. He's, there he is staring right at us. Mackie was going to shoot him. We could have actually, you know, we probably could have been millionaires tonight by killing the first Bigfoot. And like I said, I, I, I wasn't going to shoot unless it, and I didn't actually point, point the gun at it. I had it at my side, you know, but like I was ready, like I wanted it to make a move. Um, right over here at State Road Cover Bridge in beautiful well, County, out Ohio, Ashville County, Ohio. And I, and I just want to preface this because I know you showed other videos and you said, well, this was so-and-so or whatever. This is in Southern o This was somewhere else. No, this was us. And this was us. And this was around here, Monroe Township. Monroe Township? Yep. That's where we were at. That is in Monroe Township. Why aren't we in Conneaut Township? Oh, it's because it's outside it, of Conneaut. Uh, it's uh, Monroe Hatches Township. Corner. Yeah. Monroe Township, peeps. You can go down there and check it out. We're going to do a recount on the other side of that lake. Too, I don't know how. I'm telling you what. I don't know how we're, we're getting over there. there. Well, the warmer it gets, I don't mind getting in the water as long as it's warm. Well, of course, after you start the, walking in wet The warmer boots, it gets, the more that vegetation hurt. is going to grow. It is. <laughs> that is absolutely uh, and the, for sure. And the more spider webs we're going to have to go through in the summer there. I think that things, some of the bugs, everything, it's just starting to ramp up. You talk about summertime, we're going to have uh, mosquitoes galore. and Yeah, right. Uh, I think, yeah, that looks like uh, once things start and to cool off a little bit. And that's a lot of property bit. back there, too. So, because, you know, we're going to need that vegetation down to go through there because there's not, there's not a path going back there. Look at that thing. Look, Look at them sitting there staring at us, peeps. You think we're crazy. There it is right here. Beautiful. No. I, I, Tiny out Ohio. I showed, that, I showed that to a couple of people and said, honest opinion, I felt like I was being watched. I turned and seen this, snapped this picture of it. I zoomed in say? on it, and I said, what, what, do, what, do you, what do you see? I had one person say, that looks like a bear to me. I had another person say, it looks like a guy in a ghillie suit. Um, okay. And Either one would not be okay. that long sitting, sitting still. They wouldn't be, be there. They wouldn't be sitting there I'm telling you what, you're, you're talking, and that's what. Now, when I sent that to Ken, Ken does video. He'll do video breakdowns. Like, he'll dive in deep right. on it. He'll break down. He'll zoom that into the pixelate everything. Uh, and, I mean, and he'll take a good look. He takes it. And I said, honest opinion, just tell me what it is. I told him the backstory. All the stuff about even the bear prints. So I said, I'm going to give you the whole totality of circumstances. Right, right. Okay, you're going to look at this objectively as investigators. And uh, so, and um, said, so break this down. And he said, if that were somebody in a ghillie, his first response, and I didn't say anything about what anyone else had said, his first response was that that can't be a guy in a ghillie suit. He said the 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 
the stillness level you're talking about there, that's like sniper special forces training. That's not, I mean, you would have to be some very well-trained, uh, well-disciplined to stay that still, especially after mm-hmm. we're even saying, I see it move. And then still kind of the whole hold it. See, I, I'm thinking this too. Like I said, I didn't point the gun at it. I had it out on my side, but it seen me unholster because it flinched. Because that's the other thing is it flinched when I, I seen it flinch. But then I, I took unholstered the gun. It flinched. Now, if that was a person, and you see someone start to pull out a gun, and we're looking right at you, you're gonna say, "Hey, don't shoot! I'm just." out here hunting or whatever, you know, you're going to say something. You're not going to be like, okay, charade. You're going to be like, at that point, you're going to say, if you're in your ghillie suit, you're going to say charades up. Okay. I'm not, I'm not out in Monroe township to get shot. Okay. That's not what happened. It flinched a little bit. Like it recognized. He shot. If I told Mackie to shoot, he would have shot that. Well, I even, I even told you I had it down on my side, but I said, I'd, I would absolutely you were ready. love. There was a couple of little points where I said something. You got a little sparked up. You were ready. You... I was ready. Uh, I was absolutely. I was waiting. That's what I said. I was waiting for it to. If it would have came towards us, uh, if it would have jumped up, come started running toward over that water. Um, and I have also. I change out. I change out for. And I. I just had my nine mil with me for that. Usually I carry that. I always tell you I carry the ten mil too. I. I this hike. I thought. Nah, we're not gonna. You know. And that's how it always goes. I'm not gonna see anything. Okay, Dang, but I had the nine mil. It. But I have, uh, I have uh, for our walk. I put, I put in nine mil, nine mil buffalo bore rounds, which are bear load. So, and I, I had twelve shots uh, from down from less set. than thirty yards. Uh, if that would have come across, especially with it trying to go through water, I'd have hit all twelve into it, and and they were so they're, hundred and forty seven grain rounds. Uh, so it's, it's a, it's a powerful round. You wouldn't, it's, it's a round that you'd use if a grizzly was charging you. Okay. Um, so that's what I was ready with. So if it would have charged at us, I'd had 12 rounds. And if this that, is real and, people, and this if is that, just if that today. Didn't do this it, is today here. The, the knife I had, if that didn't do it, then I'd get the knife out and we'd <laughs> hand to hand. Just so you know, just, uh, Here, let me turn my just so you know, right there, that's the State Road Cover Bridge. This was my first stop. We we just came down. We're parked on the far side. We came in. We walked along. I part uh, where I'm standing in the creek. I do this little whoop de woo right here. In that little picture there, we were probably we were football and we were probably 150 yards off the bridge from there. Yeah, not too far. And then where I'm panning off to is where I'm going to head next to. And then when we come over here, we go in a little bit. We walk down the trail, and then now we're at the bend. So to my right is where those gr- those big slate cliffs are on, the, uh, where those big slate cliffs are at on the west side of this creek. So if you're going across State Road's bridge, it's on the right-hand side. So then I'm standing there, doop de doo looking at the birds and the bees and looking for Indian bear mounds and mystical, magical rock formations. And I see in the corner of my eye... Colonel Mac, he's he's kind of looking at what I'm doing, then he turns away, and then he starts to kind of like, I think you're crouched or something, but you're like standing up, and I could see your arm, his right arm, grabbing up for the gun, and then I pan over there, and I could see it, but then, of course, I'm looking through the camera, because I'm blind, I'm trying to find him, and this is what it is, this is right there. Yeah. And there that thing is, just sitting right there. Like I said, I, I totally activated, and kind of the mode I go into, like when you say to do that, I go into, that's my, from my combat training mode, dress, I go into, I go into combat mode. Combat. Yeah. See, there, I, even if you look at that little video right there, and I know, listen, I'm going to say right now, it's been a long two days, peeps. We've been out hiking, going through some deep jungle. Yeah. I'm going to tell you about right here. We hiked miles, too. I mean, that thing, could, there's a, a little spot where I could swear it twitches. Because I even yell out to Mackie, I said, I think it moves. It moved. And that's, it moved. When, I, that's moved. when I said, because I had the gun because at my see side, different and I'm colors. like, I want to put a round into it. And you go, don't shoot it. It could be a kid. It could. <laughs> and I went, no, this oh. thing was huge looking. And I went, the heck? I said, that ain't no kid. <laughs> so, um, 
But I can tell you, nothing in our thought with what we could see, we're like, n bear didn't come into the equation. It didn't have a muzzle. No, a bear 